Who's been in this situation before? You have to teach a session for the first time or design a new course. So the first thing you think about is the time that's been allocated. Is it a one hour session? Is it a 10 week course, etc. And then all the stuff or content that you should cover. Stuff that's interesting, stuff that students really need to know. And then you start to curate resources and create content to deliver in the session or course over the allocated time. I know I've done this before, how about you? I used to take this approach before finding out it wasn't the best approach for me or my learners. To use an analogy, it was like jumping into my car and aimlessly driving around for an hour, which can be fun, but there's no real purpose and it can be difficult to persuade others to join you on that journey. So what's the alternative? Well, in this video, we're going to look at a learning design process called backwards design that will guide you to create concise, purposeful, engaging, outcomes-focused education that is constructively aligned. This is also why I start to offer some practical application to build on my previous discussions on the concept of learning design. But let's go back to that car analogy. If I say to my friends, hey guys, I'm going for a ride around Dubai, the city we live in, they might come, but they're less likely to do so if I haven't really got a plan or a destination in mind. In learning design terms, this can be thought of as a forward design approach. Being guided by the journey is like being guided by the content of your course. It can lead to an aimless journey that has no focus, the relevance is not clear, and learners are more likely to disengage. Instead, a backwards design approach starts by specifying the end, what your learners will achieve at the end of the learning experience, and then being super explicit about every part of that journey from end to beginning. So going back to my car journey with friends, a backwards design approach would have me saying, hey guys, I'm driving to Dubai Mall on Monday at 11 o'clock. I'm gonna take Sheikh Zayed Road to arrive at the fashion parking zone around 11.25. It's super explicit, right? But my friends will know exactly what's happening and what they can expect if they jump in with me. I'm able to be this explicit with them because my plan for this journey has started with the end and then I've worked backwards. Backwards design starts by identifying what you want your learners to know and or do by the end of your session or course. These intentions are stated or shared with your learners as clear, measurable learning outcomes to inform them of what to expect on completion of the learning experience and also what's expected of them to succeed during the experience. Once the end goal or outcome of the learning experience is set, then you can think about how your learners can show that they're on track to achieving the outcome through evidence. And this evidence can be in the form of formative or summative assessment that helps show you and your learners where they are, if intervention or further work is needed to keep them on track. In my car analogy, the evidence to achieving my outcomes of arriving at Dubai Mall by 11.25 could be making sure my car is roadworthy, legal, has fuel, finding my way onto Sheikh Zayed Road, keeping to the speed limit, passing through two toll gates, taking exit 50, finding the fashion parking area and a free parking space. If I fail to meet any of those touch points, then what happens? This is where you can start thinking about content to support your learners to achieve the evidence that in turn show you and your learners that the learning outcomes have been met. The content in my case to help me achieve the evidence could be given from a Google map application or it could be from a passenger guiding me with directions. The beauty of the backwards design approach is that it keeps your session or course streamlined and relevant to the learners because content has a specific purpose to support completion of the evidence, which in turn supports achievement of the learning outcomes. So all elements are interlinked. This approach also really helps us shift our thoughts around assessments as it's not there to be a barrier to stop or filter learners. It has a purpose to show you and your learners how they're progressing. If you have multiple touch points of low stakes assessment, 
then corrective action can be taken before the end. You can have a formative assessment that builds to support a summative assessment. It all has a purpose, along with the content, to support the learners to achieve the desired learning outcomes. By following a backwards design approach will help you achieve a constructively aligned course that has interdependency on learning outcomes, assessment, course content and activities. So in summary, following a backwards design approach will help you to achieve a constructively aligned course that has interdependence on learning outcomes, assessment, course content and learning activities that all make for an enhanced learning experience that has a greater chance of a successful outcome for your learners.